I'm Matt Dixon, and welcome to the Purple Patch Podcast. The mission of Purple Patch is to empower and educate every human being to reach their athletic potential. Through the lens of athletic potential, you reach your human potential. The purpose of this podcast is to help time-starved people everywhere integrate sport into life. And welcome to the Purple Patch Podcast. As ever, your host, Matt Dixon. And today, well, we're going to revisit an important part of driving your performance journey. The fuel, the driver, the lightning rod to keep your spirits up when things get tough. Because we're going to discuss purpose and goals. As you're going to find out, this is a discussion on purpose and it's a discussion on goals. In other words, they're not the same thing. They're both very valuable in any performance journey, whether you're trying to win a world championship, whether you're looking to build a successful business, whether you're seeking to become just the best version of yourself that you possibly can be. It is your foundation, your bedrock of performance success. Now, I really hope that you find today valuable. And I think this might be one of those episodes where it becomes one of your reference episodes that you can maybe go back to in the future. And perhaps you'll share it with anyone that might find this education useful that you might actually want to go on and start their own performance journey, whether it's about getting moving on a day-to-day basis or whether they're trying to win a world championship. As we venture in, I want to integrate a couple of reference stories here. But what you're going to learn is first a definition and a differentiation between what purpose and goals are. Then we're going to dive into actually building your goals including what their value is, their role, how they can become effective, et cetera. And then finally, we're going to unpack why goals sometimes fail and hopefully help you avoid some of those pitfalls. And so I want to get going, but I do want to mention that as we go through today, I'm not going to interrupt your listening with any ads or promotions for Purple Patch. What I will say that if you have any uh, discussion point that you want to add to uh, to the um, the table. If you have any questions, if you want to reach out, if you're interested in any of our services, anything like that, just ping us at info at purplepatchfitness.com. We'd be delighted to set up a complimentary consultation with you. And of course, you can go to the website purplepatchfitness.com if you want to know anything more about our services. But today, we're just going to go deep dive into the education. And so, Barry, without further ado, you are doing a great job on production of the show, but it is the meat and potatoes. Yes, purpose and goals. For part one, let's dive in. And uh, and I think actually, ironically, this is the most important part of our conversation we're going to have today. Because without this clarity on the definition and the role of your purpose versus your goals, things are going to stay murky all the way through the journey. And let me tell you up front that most people don't really understand the difference between purpose and goals. Many people don't even consider their purpose. They just dive right to the goals. And so I hope that this first section that we go through could be really helpful in defining how you think about this stuff, because I think it's very, very important. Let's first talk about purpose. All righty. Your purpose, as I mentioned before, is sort of your driver. I, as a coach, placed a massive amount of emphasis of understanding an athlete's purpose. If I was coaching one of the Purple Patch professionals, I would often start our introductory calls with, all right, great, let me ask you a couple of questions. Why do you want to chase world-class performance? And what does success represent for you? What does it look like? And these were key questions to help me frame every other conversation from there forward, all of my planning. I want to understand the athletes, why? In other words, your purpose represents your core reason behind the actions that you take and is the driver of your commitment to your journey, your long-term motivation, and everything that's going to help you when adversity strikes. And if you've heard me say before, performance is never linear, so there is going to be some obstacles and adversity that you have to navigate. And so your purpose, the way to think about it is this is something that has a certain amount of permanence to it. At least it's longer term in thinking. It's not going to shift on a regular basis. It remains consistent over time and it's important to you. 
It's important to you and what you believe. So what would be some examples of a purpose? Well, let's first talk about an athlete. And let me just give you a random example of, a, of an athlete's purpose. Let's say that we have an amateur athlete who also happens to be a parent. That athlete's purpose might be that they want to be a great role model and example to their children. So that's a deeply held value that is internal. They're doing the sport so that they have a vehicle to be a great role model and an example for their kids. This is something that's really common. In fact, it's something that I really relate to. And if you consider this for a moment, it really checks all the boxes. It's long-term. It's something that's valued by the athlete. It drives their commitment and their motivation, even when they're set with setbacks. And it goes well beyond race choices, target times, PRs, victories, or anything else like that. An individual example of purpose might be someone that says, okay, I've got a purpose where I want to live a healthy, balanced life that enables me to enjoy time with my family, pursue my hobbies, and contribute to my local community. So they're really steeped in quality of life and longevity. And it's very easy when you hear that purpose to see how this purpose will actually help drive and inform action and habits that that person might take. So in other words, the actions that they take will promote the likelihood that they're able to enjoy a high quality of life, that they have the ability to retain daily functions so that they can stay engaged and active with the people and the community around them that's really important to them. So that becomes really simple to understand. Then let's extend to a business example. And it might be something really simple. A software founder of a tech company, their purpose might be to build technology to solve real world problems and make people's lives easier. Sounds very noble and nice, but it's a driving purpose. So it has nothing to do with, I wanna take a company public or I wanna establish a certain level of wealth. Instead, this founder is seeking to solve problems and improve the quality of life of others. Now this example, this really resonates with me because at Purple Patch, we see ourselves as a purpose-driven organization because we seek to improve the quality of life of our customers. And we do that via education, via training, via coaching. And so as a coach, this is really, when we think about purpose, this is where I start with any athlete, whether I'm working with an executive, a professional athlete, whatever it might be. Because if I can understand your purpose, then I can tailor the coaching, the education, the program to actually fit that mission. And the likelihood of success in that case goes up dramatically. So that's your permanence, if you want to call it that, at least long term. That's the long, that doesn't shift very much. What about goals then? That's not quite the same thing. I always view goals as emerging out of your purpose. In other words, they should in many ways act as your stepping stones towards progressing to your target purpose. That's a nice way to think about goals. And in fact, it's the only way that they can really be successful. Now, goals are quite different from your purpose in many ways because they are specific and measurable outcomes that you aim for in a specific time frame. So relative to your purpose, which is longer term, your goals tend to be shorter term or at least medium term. And they can also really evolve around different circumstances that you face and they might shift once you've hit a prior goal. And so you might actually say, you know what, that goal was great, but now we're gonna shift it again. So there's a little bit of plasticity around goals. And if, if really leveraged correctly, goals are critical. They're really important, they're very valuable because they provide a compass, a direction and a framework. They help narrow focus on the things that actually are important for you to get to where you wanna go. They have measurable milestones of progression, so checking points to understand whether you're on course or not, successful in improving or not. And they also tend to foster a certain amount of independence or autonomy because they have that operating structure. They force discipline. They can help you build your confidence in yourself on your journey and even promote a little bit of self-reliance as you go along there. 
So let's put goals into context. Let's first talk about athletic goals. So remember our athletic purpose was about being a good example and a role model to the children. Well, an athletic goal is quite different from that. It might be, let's just use one at random here, it might be an athletic goal of aiming to qualify for a world championship event with their qualifying competition being six months away. So now you have time bound six months away. It's clear purpose, you either qualify or you don't. And it can inform the actions that are necessary for you from planning your training and the supporting habits to improve yourself as an athlete, to bring you to race day, ready to perform at the level that are gonna facilitate that qualification. So that's a goal. That's a really useful one. What about an individual example? Remember our purpose for the individual was seeped in uh, longevity, quality of life and components like that. A goal might be that the person might want to exercise for 30 minutes at least five times a week. Or it might be that they want to improve their body composition and lose 10 pounds over the course of the four months by following a really balanced diet and a regular exercise routine. So it informs again, it's time bound, it's measurable, and, uh, and it creates a catalyst for the actions that are necessary that are gonna take them on a journey to actually achieve that goal that feeds into your purpose. And that's where it becomes really, really important. A business example might be for that tech founder to actually expand their product line and enhance online marketing efforts so that you can increase monthly revenue by 20% over six months. So again, time bound, really measurable, et cetera, and it's gonna inform the actions that you take. In essence, the way to think about this, if you want something that you can always remember in your mind, purpose versus goals, is purpose is your why. Spend a lot of time talking about this with athletes. What's your why? What are you looking to do this? It's the why behind you're doing what you're doing, what you're committing to, versus goals are the what and how. So what are the actions you're gonna take? How am I actually gonna get me to move along this progression, this journey to get there? They're gonna guide your actions towards fulfilling that purpose, alrighty? So purpose is your why, goals are your what and how. Very simple. The purpose is undoubtedly the most important part of your performance journey. And yet many people don't spend much, if any time, reflecting on that, even though that's your driver of long-term commitment and motivation. I see so many athletes meticulously planning a season of races, and they wanna know what power they're gonna hold, what place they wanna get, where they wanna qualify. But they don't consider what success actually looks like, what truly motivates their journey, why are they doing it? And these are the athletes that consistently I see struggle the most when they have maybe a poor set of results or a bad patch of training, or they get injured or other setbacks that can occur. And interestingly, I've seen this a lot at the elite, even world-class level. And this pattern is often reflected then in how the athlete behaves. And I see it as being really destructive to long-term success and development. So as I mentioned at the top of the show, I often ask pro athletes about their why. What does success look like? And every single time that I've coached an athlete, and some of them have been very, very good, up to world champion level, the ones that struggle to really come up with something authentic, believable, this is what I want to get out of this, this is why I'm doing it, the athletes that struggle with that are the ones that are most prone to have big swings of emotions. They often bounce between coaches and they might experience a singular breakthrough performance. But quite often that massive breakthrough performance is not then backed up with a career of high sustained performance. And so they're kind of one hit wonders. And it's really sad to see, but it's the fact that they're unable or they haven't spent the time or they don't value understanding their purpose. And so therefore, they're more likely to be a pendulum of emotions they're more likely to be reactive. And when things go against them, they really struggle emotionally and mentally and practically. And so it's no wonder that these are the athletes that really struggle to develop that consistent high performance over the long term. It's no wonder that when things go bad, they just hit the eject seat, get rid of the coach. It must be their fault, move on to the other one, etc. 
they're going to go through bigger and deeper lows and spirals when adversity spikes. It's really challenging, but we can draw from that and apply it. And so in other words, the key message out of this is not to try and dissect elite athletes. It's really, for me to say to you, it's really valuable for you to understand your why, your purpose, because then you can progress onto the what and how, your goals. So let's talk about in part two, establishing your goals. So part two, we're talking about establishing goals. What's the process that you want to go through to actually sensibly build goals and ensure that they're really effective to help you progress on towards your ultimate purpose in whatever is important to you in life? Well, the first is not rushing to put pen to paper on things like target events or metrics that you're looking to achieve, but actually do genuinely. And I just sort of alluded to this, but take the time to understand your purpose identify it. Why are you doing this? And it's no surprise that I start here, of course. Understanding your purpose first is the thing that your smart goals will come out of. What does success look like? I often say to an athlete, ask yourself, in 12 months' time, when you look back and you see yourself now to where you are going to be in 12 months, what will it look like? And with that, why? What are you looking to get out of it? If you spend some time, it shouldn't take too long, but you can attach to that, that's your hook. That's the thing that's gonna keep you on course no matter how windy or turbulent the journey is. That is your purpose. And then under that umbrella, the next step of the process is to start to chart your roadmap. And this is where you get more specific and achievable in your goal setting. Now, you might have heard of SMART goals before, and there's nothing revolutionary about this. It's a very nice structure. It's very simple, and that's to set specific, S, measurable, M, achievable, that's important, A, relevant to you and your purpose and where you're driving, and that are, and then T, time-bound goals. So that's just a nice, memorable, smart, okay? Specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound goals. Now, these goals want to be really sensible for you and realistic. But at the same time, they want to be challenging enough that they initiate a little bit or ignite a little bit of the old shits. In other words, enough challenge to promote a tad of anxiety for you. Can I really do this? Well, you can if you take the right action and you're fully committed and you understand why you're doing it. And then with those goals, you break those larger goals into smaller, manageable steps. And that's the power of goals, is they create the framework, the direction, the compass. But most importantly, if they're taking you on a journey towards your purpose, then you have the opportunity to say, okay, to achieve them, what do I need to do? And that's the how. What do I need to do and how am I going to do it? Boom. That is where goals become really valuable because it is out of there that that you can finally then move to the third step, which is to create a plan. In other words, develop a clear plan of action or actions that are going to help you achieve your goal. Now, this is, and I say this as a coach, this is particularly powerful if you do it with a coach. So someone that actually guides you and help you build this framework and plan. Why? Well, a coach should have wisdom from taking many journeys prior to the one that you're on. It's your journey. It's the first time you're doing this. Many journeys just like you with other people and with other athletes, if it's in an athletic context. And so they've done it before with other people, number one. They've got domain experience and expertise, so they should bring a certain amount of wisdom. And also, they act as a really valued sounding board and sanity check for you. You can have lots of ideas, but a good coach should be able to filter those ideas and help you get to the actionable stuff that's really going to yield most of the important steps towards the journey. This is why, as a tangent, this is why so many Purple Patch athletes that we coach on our Tri-Squad program, which is a little bit more of an autonomous program, comes with a lot of support, a whole surrounding community, but a lot of them like to get individual coaching consultations so that they can set the plan because they understand that then they can go away and execute 
and they don't need the one-to-one day-to-day uh, accountability. They have that and they leverage our community, our broader athlete community to help them on that journey. And so that's why a lot of our tri squad athletes say, hey, I want to get a consultation to really help me think through this stuff and plan it. And so that plan is not built in a vacuum. It's understanding your purpose, setting goals that are time bound and measurable, understanding what you need to get done, and then planning for it. It's a pretty simple process that you go through, yeah? The fourth element then is to start. But here's the important thing about starting, is you want to start without A, being in too much of a rush and ensure that you're starting at your start line. Because where you want to go is gonna include transformation, evolution, development, improvement, but you're not there yet. And so the biggest mistake that I see people do is they begin on their journey too quickly and they just throw everything at it. Of course, they're excited, they're anticipatory, they may have got a bit of fear, so they throw it and bad things happen. Athletes break, get injured, lose motivation, etc. Or you start ahead of the reality of your start line. So if you're currently absolutely sedentary, let's use a health and longevity example. If you're sedentary right now, You don't want to take on too much at once. You don't want to say, okay, I'm going to start exercising seven days a week. I'm going to join a gym. I'm going to make sure that I go jogging on the weekend. I'm also going to prioritize my sleep. I'm going to improve my nutrition. I'm going to hydrate every day. It's overwhelming. It's too much. And you're going to struggle and fail. And you're going to have setbacks and you're going to hit the cycle. So we don't want to do that. So that's very important. Instead, you might just say, I'm going to walk 20 minutes every night after dinner. So that's really simple. I'm going to do it for three weeks. There's a mini goal that leads you onto the bigger goal that you might have, and it informs your actions. And then once I've done that for three weeks, I might be able to add something. And I'm going to add maybe thinking about my sleep as my next thing. And the third thing I'm going to add two weeks later, because I'm now walking every night after dinner, maybe I'm including a little bit of an extension on the weekend. Now I'm sleeping better. Now I'm going to think about my hydration. So there are steps of transformation that are important that begin at your start line. What you see as an Olympic athlete or a world champion athlete, they haven't been that for a long time. They started somewhere and they developed over the course of not just months, but years. And this becomes really, really important. And that's it, yeah? We're done. Not so fast. There's a couple of other things as you put these things into action. Step number five is to lean into resources and support. Don't go on this journey alone. Use your resources, such as coaching, materials that you have, perhaps your community or support that you can have, even if it's it's just a buddy that's going on a journey, but you need people to help you. At Purple Patch, for the athletes, it's the coaching team. It's the athlete community. It's the supporting domain experts that we provide access to. It's those people and resources that help the individual thrive within an ecosystem, within the Purple Patch team and community of athletes. But I really encourage you, don't go alone. And then finally, the two components to help those goals go on and be successful. Number one, which now I'm on, I think, point number five or six, is reflection. In other words, consistently as you are applying the plan, ensure that when you think about goal setting, you're integrating moments where you pause, where you come up out of the weeds of the day-to-day and you assess your progress. Am I on track? What am I doing well? Where do I need to adjust? How should I actually adapt the program relative to the obstacles or challenges that I have faced along the way? And then the final component, as you're going on this journey, because it is a journey always, no matter whether you're looking to build a business, build an athlete, build better improvement in quality of life, whatever it is, finally, make sure that you give yourself little moments of celebration. Because that journey, it's tough, it's arduous, it takes time, it can't be rushed. And so you can make it a real grind. It can become pretty sterile but a sure way to maintain your motivation and to ensure that you are driving towards your purpose 
is to make it fun and to celebrate the many victories that you do have along the way. Because there will be tough times, but there will also be chances of success and enjoyment. Now, to wrap it up on purpose and goals, at Purple Patch, we always talk about helping athletes go fast and achieving their athletic goals, but also amplifying how they show up in life. In other words, our purpose is not just about helping you go faster. It's the fact that while we are helping you go faster, the goals is not just about achieving success in sport, PRs, first-time finishes, qualifications, world championships, etc. It's also about fulfilling your purpose and contributing to your overall well-being. And so that's the driver of how we think about that. So under that banner, what I want to do is I want to finish with the pitfalls. Because as we go along this journey, there are quite a few pitfalls. And I want you to avoid those as you're thinking about setting up a performance journey, establishing goals, making sure that you identify your purpose. So let's hit part three. Let's do the pitfalls. I've set my purpose. I've set my goals. What could possibly go wrong? Well, it turns out quite a bit. So why don't we avoid it? Because it's mostly absolutely avoidable. The first pitfall that I see is folks making unrealistic goals. In other words, they're just setting goals that are way too ambitious and unattainable. Shooting for the moon is great, but being unrealistic, particularly in the context of your life, can ultimately lead to frustration and disappointment. Remember that the driver for your motivation is purpose, and that's really important. And under that umbrella, your stepping stones to get to your purpose are your goals. And so it is a st achievement of a goal of which then you can establish another goal of which you can establish another goal that leads you on to your ultimate purpose. And that's really valuable. And under that banner, that's how Olympic athletes would set it up. That's how people that become world champions would set things up, etc. And so if I'm at the start of an Olympic cycle, I'm not thinking Olympic Games, Olympic Games, Olympic Games. That might drive me inside but I'm setting up goals for the year that can help me improve and take another step towards the purpose of ultimately becoming the best athlete that I can be. And when I'm the best athlete that can be, guess what? I might become an Olympic champion. I was never good enough for that, but there you go. You know, that's the, that's the concept. Now, this becomes particularly important if you're a time-starved individual where you've got massive competing demands because you need to have a little bit of a reality check in there and say, look, I'm going to achieve great things, but I can't do it at a consequence of all of the other important non-negotiable competing demands that might come with family and friends or, of course, comes with your responsibility of work. And so putting goals in context, I think, is really valuable for you. Just keep that in mind as you establish your goals. The second big pitfall is athletes having too many goals absolutely overloading yourself with too many goals at a singular time. There's a reason at Purple Patch that we talk about nailing the basics. And this is on a habitual basis back to back. So always going easy on easy sessions, post-workout fueling, all of the components that make up success. But the second component to that is what we're really looking to do is to focus the energy on the things that are going to yield the biggest performance games, but filtering out distractions. And so we try and have athletes focus on just a few things and master them so that they can improve. The same goes with goals. Don't have 10 goals. Just have one or two. Maybe have a primary goal and have a couple of minor goals that are going to help us get on the way there. Let's give me an example. This is an athlete that I was talking about this morning. Next year, he wants to go and do an Ironman. Fantastic. But right now, the goal through the coming three months is to focus on real mobility and strengthening and running consistently where what has plagued him in prior lives is plantar fasciitis. And we want to remove that as a factor. So he's got a goal that by the end of three months time, he can run without any real consideration of injury being a consistent setback for him. Now he's gonna have a target race as well, but that's a primary goal, which is of course informing our actions and how we actually get there. And if we're successful, he's got a higher propensity to be really successful in his Ironman training to get him ready to go and have this first great achievement at an Ironman, really simple stuff. So too many goals can be inhibiting as well. Pitfall number three, a lack of clarity. 
So this is really important, just having vague goals that ultimately can create a lack of direction or confusion. I talked about a goal coming out of your purpose. That's important. But it's also only going to be effective if it is going to inform your steps, your actions, your how. So if it's vague or confusing, it's just there, it's just a goal, but it's not going to really elicit anything but maybe a short-term little peak of motivation. So really get clear and crisp on them. All righty. Pitfall number four, a huge one. People do this all the time. Obsess on the outcome rather than the process. Now, I talked about this quite a bit, but really focusing on process or process for you is really, really helpful. If you over-focus on the end result, it's just going to amplify stress and it's going to neglect the importance of the learning process. And so when you get someone to focus and put their energy into the process, then you're actually having them shift their emphasis onto the things that are under their control. And that's empowering. That's really beneficial. When I see athletes that just focus on outcome, 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 Then, when they're met with the first piece of adversity, and let's just think about it, a bad workout, immediately like, oh no, I'm never going to be able to win or qualify or finish or whatever the goal might be for the race. Instead of actually saying, it's a bad workout. Let's put it behind me and let's move on. And then a huge component, and this is something that really uh, is born out of my work with elite athletes, a big pitfall, a lack of reflection and adjustment. The greatest athletes that I ever worked with were masters. They didn't need me to tell them, were masters of saying, let's pause, I want to come up and I want to reflect. Now, they might not have verbally said that, but that was baked into their psyche. They really developed them. What are we doing well? Are we on track? What do I need to adjust? Really powerful and important stuff. And the final pitfall, going on a journey alone. I can't overemphasize this enough. This is important. If you are ambitious, you're purpose-driven, and you have goals, typically failing to leverage the necessary support and resources can hinder your ability to achieve your goals. I never see athletes, and I can say that, I was gonna say I seldom see, but I never see athletes who thrive long-term when they go in a purely individual pursuit. It is so much better to be a part of something. And I see this in organizations, I see this in elite sport. The higher the performance level we see of the athlete, or the higher in the organization, the much more likely is that that person is gonna reach out for external support. And bizarrely, amateur athletes love to emulate professionals, except in one area, coaching. Confusingly, They want to mimic pros in every way, apart from the fact that every pro that is successful over the long term has a coach. And yet many amateurs fall into the trap of thinking, I'll just go alone. I'm not going to benefit from that, which is a strange perception. Every single elite athlete that is successful in the long term is coached. And there's a reason for that. And so in conclusion, be brave, folks, be ambitious, but ensure that your goals are realistic, clearly defined, process orientated, and supportive of your overall well-being. And if you want to maintain your motivation, if you want to stay engaged, review and adapt those goals as necessary. And finally, if those goals are born out of a greater purpose, then you're going to have not just better results, but greater personal fulfillment and ultimately control. And that makes it a lot more fun. I hope that helps. Purpose versus goals. We'll see you next week. Take care. Guys, thanks so much for joining and thank you for listening. I hope that you enjoyed the new format. You can never miss an episode by simply subscribing. Head to the Purple Patch channel of YouTube and you will find it there and you could subscribe. Of course, I'd like to ask you if you will subscribe, also share it with your friends. And it's really helpful if you leave a nice positive review in the comments. Now, any questions that you have, let me know. Feel free to add a comment and I will try my best to respond and support you on your performance journey. And in fact, 
as we commence this video podcast experience. If you have any feedback at all, as mentioned earlier in the show, we would love your help in helping us to improve. Simply email us at info at purplepatchfitness.com or leave it in the comments of the show at the Purple Patch page and we will get you dialed in. We'd love constructive feedback. We are in a growth mindset, as we like to call it. And so feel free to share with your friends. But as I said, let's build this together. Let's make it something special. It's really fun. We're really trying hard to make it a special experience. And we want to welcome you into the Purple Patch community. With that, I hope you have a great week. Stay healthy. Have fun. Keep smiling, doing whatever you do. Take care.